Good morning, our brother Robert will be speaking to us. Uh, the title of his talk is Not by Might, Not by Power, But by the Spirit of the Lord. And he's asked us to consider a reading from Ezra, the ninth chapter. Ezra chapter 9. Now when they th these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and of and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the land of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard, and sat down astonished. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the word of God of Israel, because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God, and said, O my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in great trespass unto this day, and for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the land, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. And now for a little space, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape, and to give us a nail in his holy place, that our God may lighten our eyes, and give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the side of the king of Persia, to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our God, and to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servants, the prophets, saying, The land unto ye unto which ye go in to possess it, it is an unclean land, with the filthiness of the people of the lands, and with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters to your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all this was come unto us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that our God has punished us less than our iniquities deserve, and has given us such as and has given us such deliverance as this. Shall we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldest not thou be angry with us till thou had consumed us, so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespass, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. So with that reading, let's call upon our brother Robert. And again, his title is Not by Might, Not by Strength, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is nice to see you here in the God's house. This is a privilege for me to stand before you, the elders of Ecclesia, and sharing the word of God with you. This chapter that 
for the Margaret to us this morning. This is according to our daily reading. This is the first portion of our reading today. And uh, it has an important message for us, an important reminder for us that the Spirit of the Lord is always working in our lives according to His will and purpose for us and for His creation, actually, to fill it with His glory. It was about the uh, 500. Uh, 516 BC before Christ that <coughs> God <coughs> God uh, raised up the Cyrus king of Persia in the spirit to deliver his nation who was supposed to be uh, identified by, by his name the, the nation of Israel If you go through Book of Ezra and Nehemiah, this is covered the uh, story, the, the history of Israel imme immediately after their return to back to the Jerusalem from from captivity. The last portion of Book of Jeremiah it covers the history of the nation of Israel before captivity and a little bit after captivity when they went to captivity in Babylon. I'm pretty sure that you read how King Solomon was building so glorious temple for the Lord in Jerusalem. Of course with the instructions that I'm sure that God was given through, uh, to him through the wisdom. It was a very glorious temple. And, and the Lord promised to the Israelites and Solomon that I will be placing dwelling on this house and my name will be on it. But there was a condition if you follow my commandments, I will not be on this house if it's not worthy for me. I will leave the house. And so he did. Because the Israelite and tribe of Judah, they rebelled against God. They forsaken God and his commandments and his goodness. They were tasting God's goodness, but the worldly things, the, their businesses, in their time, they took them out and they backsliding from the way that we're following. So Book of Ezra is introduce us what was happening when the Persian attacked the Babylon and they invaded the land around 127, according to the book of Easter, about 127 it was including the land of Persia, which was given by God. If you come to the first chapter of Israel, chapter one, verse one, it says that Israel chapter 1 verse 1. In the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord straight up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia so that he made a procl uh, proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also 
put in the uh, put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, he gave he given me all the kingdom of the earth, and he has charged me to build charged me to build him a house at Jer Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And verse says, Whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. So this is this is the Lord that given this authority and to the Cyrus and raised his spirit for his purpose and his plan for his nation. We can read it in also Isaiah chapter 45. And Isaiah referred to the Cyrus as a shepherd, shepherd which is gathering the flock of God and led, uh, delivering them to go back to the to their country. At at the same time, which was Israel was encouraging the people, and was very zealous servant of God, that was encouraging the Israelite, those who were in uh, in captivity, to go back, and to re uh, restore the house of the Lord. At the same time, Haggai and Zechariah, they were encouraging also the people in uh, land of Judah to to give them encouraging and uh, sharing the word of God with them to encourage them to be quick and to be strong because God is among you nothing is there that you should be afraid of and therefore the book of Haggai and Zechariah also covers this part of the time in Jerusalem. We see that always in our lives, sometimes we see how God is working and how is his work, how, how wonder, wonderful is his work. Actually, this is his spirit that doing even more than what we can think about it. I would like to read Zechariah chapter Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 Zechariah 4, chapter 6, uh, chapter 4, verse 6 says, Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the in charge of the people who were in uh, Jerusalem. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of the hosts. And Verse 7 says, Who are you, O great mountains? Who are you, O great mountains? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stones amid shots of grace, grace to it. There was a, good, a small group in Jerusalem that uh, they were building their houses. They they took uh, took the, the many land in Jerusalem after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, was destroyed the Jerusalem, and there was no more Jewish people there because all of them they were killed by the sword and disaster. So another people, another nation, they come to the Jerusalem. They build their houses there. And now, after captivity, when the Jews return to the Jerusalem and 
they want to, to uh, build their country again, they were preventing them to building the temple. Here, the mountain is referred to them the, in the book of Zachariah, uh, this verse which we read. It's referred to them and God giving guarantee to Zerubbabel, which is in charge of the Jews, Jewish, as a elder, elder of Israel. It says, don't be afraid of these people. They will be playing before you and I will do it by my spirit. So also we see in chapter one that Zechariah sees the vision that the angel of the Lord speaking to him and giving the promise of Lord that I will be build my rebuild my temple in Jerusalem. He will do his plan according to his will and for for our uh, goodness, for our benefits. As he said in Jeremiah 29, there was a two group before captivity in Jerusalem in the time of Jeremiah. If we, lo uh, if we look from the time of, from uh, the time of uh, slavery of nation of Israel in Egypt, God delivered them by his mighty hand through the Moses. 40 years in the wilderness, he was preparing them spiritually to enter them to the promised land. They were all hearing the word of God through the, his angels, seeing amazing signs and miracle in the wilderness. Actually, but they didn't trust God. He was, God was suffering with them for their rebellious heart. If, if you come to, this is the Lord reminding them, go and look which nation has been such a, uh, has having such a great privilege that being ad identifying by my name and seeing this miracle. Please turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter four. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 32. For us now of the days that are past, which were before you since the day that God created man on the earth, and us from one end of heaven to the other, whether such a great thing as this has ever happened or was ever heard of. Did any people ever hear the voice of a God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as you have heard and still live? Or has any God ever attempted to go and take a nation for himself? from the midst of another nation, by trials, by signs, by wonders, and by war, by, might, by mighty hand, and, and outstretched arm, and by great deeds, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt, Egypt 
before your eyes. So we see that God was working in their lives, entering them in the promised land, which is flowed with milk and honey. Everything was prepared for them to live the peacefully, especially in the time of David and Solomon. But they were not fruitful. What, how they respond to these blessings and this great work of God. Isaiah has a beautiful parable for them as a wine yard. We see that God uh, called them as wine, his wine yard in Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5 said, Let me sing for my beloved, my loved song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fitted hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted which choice wine. He built a watchtower, watchtower in the midst of it and hovered out a wine what in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yield wild grapes. And now, O oh inhabitants of Jerusalem, and man of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its huge uh, hedge and in, sh in it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hot, and barriers and thrones shall grow up. And the end of the chapter, it says that uh, end of this uh, parable, it says that and and the man of Judah, all his pleasant planting, and he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed; for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. We see that God did his, his part. He did wonderful things for the nation of Israel and just he was looking for their obedience. But they lost their benefits, their privilege and their blessings. For almost 250 years in the time of Prophet Isaiah and Prophet Jeremiah they all heard this warning from God that I, if you are not following me, I will destroy your land. I will forsake you because you have forsaken me. But they, they marked on the prophets. They marked on the Jeremiah. They put them on the jail. They, they were beaten them and they were persecuted to God's prophet. They killed the God's prophets because they were saying the truth. Finally, it was time for the judgments at the time of King Zedekiah, the king of Judah. So the king of Babylon attacked Jerusalem, and that time there was a two group of people living in Jerusalem. One group was the faithful tribe, the faithful people, which is King Nebuchadnezzar took them to the Babylon 
at the first and after almost three and a half years he attacked again and destroyed the Jerusalem walls and the temples took all the vessels of the worshipping from the God's house and killed all other remaining people in Jerusalem. We see that this judgment God sent the faithful people to protect them to the land of Babylon, to the captivity, which is Jeremiah 24. It's, uh, there's a parable about the, fig, uh, the, the basket of two types of fig, which is uh, bad fig and good fig. And God saying that I will bring them, I will establish them, I will restore them spiritually. And now this is time for Israel, the faithful and zealous servant of, the go of God, to, after almost 70 years of captivity, to encourage the people to be firm in, the, in their faith, faith and to respond to the, uh, uh, God's, uh, the Lord's call to go back to the Jerusalem and build the God's temple. Please turn with me to book of Haggai, chapter 1, which is God's uh, word of God came to Haggai saying, tell, uh, tell to the Judas this is a time for building my house, not to continue to your businesses and doing your stuff. I will read uh, Haggai chapter 1 from verse 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai to the prophet, Haggai the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet, it is the time for it, it, uh, is it the time for yourselves to dwell in your planted houses, houses while this house lies in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of the host, consider your ways. You have sh you have sown much and harvest little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. Your, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wedg wedges doesn't so to put them into a bag with holes. It's saying, now you have established in foreign lands you have been married with the foreign people. You have been established your houses there. You have your businesses. And you are forget about my uh, houses, my house. You are forget about the promises that I have been made by your father. So it's commanding Haggai, Zechariah, and Ezra to encourage them to return to the Jerusalem and building God's temple. But they did. They encouraged the Israelites. They went back to the Jerusalem and they start building the wall. But there was a opposite group. They were, they were trying to stop the building of the Lord, the building the of the, the temple of the Lord. But after Cyrus, Darius again 
help them and give them the material for continuing their work. In Israel chapter 9, we see that now Israel coming to gather the Levites and taking them uh, uh, to the Jerusalem and putting them on their job, which was to serve the Lord and to actually uh, starting their pu uh, putting them in their position for doing their job. At, at the beginning of his prayer, he's, he feels very sorry for these people because they were not supposed to marry with the foreign and other nations. As God was commanding command them before, even before they entered the promised land, and to not marry with the other nations and do not wish them prosperity. At his beginning of his prayer, he heard from the elders of the nation of Israel and that the Levites and priests have been mixed with the other nation. And he was uh, very sorry. He was uh, throwing his garments and he was praying to God for forgiveness, seeking his forgiveness and seeking his help. And he feel ashamed for this abomination. It says in chapter 9, Ezra chapter 9, verse 6. Saying, oh my God, I am ashamed and blushed to leave my face to you. My God, for our iniquities have risen higher than our heads. And our guilt has mounted up to the heavens. Already the Lord has been warning them in in the time of Moses, you are not supposed to do that. You are not supposed to mix with the other people. But they, they forsake all these commandments. They, they forget and they forsake God. Because they didn't attend their words, the Torah, which was given to the Moses. And this is the result. This is the consequences of being f uh, not attending the word of God as in Hosea chapter 4 God says they have been perished because they have been forsaken me but let us read Deuteronomy chapter 7 and see the reason that God has been commandment commanded them to not marry with the other nations. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. You shall not intermarry with them, giving, giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters to your sons, for they would turn away your sons from following me to serve other God, gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you quickly. We see that God has foretold them that you are not supposed to do that. But here, Israel and Nehemiah, finally they separate them and 
they remind them all these commandments in the time of Neh Nehemiah, and they encourage them to return to the Jerusalem without these their wives and their family, which is from other nations. Dear brothers and sisters, we are supposed to do to build the house of the God, the God's temple. We know that we are the God's temple. Paul says in Corinthians that, do you know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God is dwelling in you? Like Israel, that encourage other, encourage the uh, Jewish to, to rebuild the uh, temple of God, let us encourage one another to build the spiritual temple of God. It needs a hard, hard work. It's not easy. We should be available for God to reshape us, to be fit in his house. We should not be mixing with the with the more Im uh, with the immorality of this world with this corruption of this world we should be we should separate ourselves from them and following god's commandments and god's purpose and god's promised us that i will fill the, er the earth by my glory he will fill us by his glory if let, let's let's read the uh, book of Haggai, which is beautiful verse about what has uh, God promised us. Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. I will uh, start from verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declared the Lord of the host. The, late, the later glory of this house shall be greater than the, fo uh, the former, the former, say the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. This is talking about kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is we will be filled with the God's glory. There shall be no disobedience, uh, disobedience and no rebelling against God. Let us back to Ezra chapter 9 and his prayer. This is very important that always we confess to our God as Israel did of our disobedience sometimes and our sins which we have done against him. Against him. We have great privilege in Christ that we can seek God's blessing, God's forgiveness through our master and our savior.
chapter 9 it says that Ezra 9 uh, verse 9 says for we are slaves yet our God has not forsaken us in our slavery remember that this is the group that were more faithful that, uh, than other group in Jerusalem and now they are in captivity yet our God has not forsaken us in our slavery but has extended to us his steadfast love he is loving us with steadfast love he will restore us he will work in our life for to be fit in his temple in his kingdom but there is we should be available there is a part for us we should be rich in his knowledge of his glory <coughs> we should attend our the word of god which is measurement for our actions measurement for our faith measurement for our hope that we have in returning of our master jesus christ dear brothers and sisters we should we should not be like child still in the word of god we should we should trying hard we should trying to getting deeper understanding of god's word by reading it every day by reading reading it the history of israel which is applies for this age exactly matching with our situation matching with our experience in this world if we getting to know our father in heaven more and more we will not be losing our way to his kingdom remember that peter saying that in uh, first peter chapter 1 he has been given us whatever we need for following him in holiness Second Peter chapter one verse three. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that that is in the world because of sinful desire we can be encouraged by God's word to be straight and to be firm in our faith to getting knowing about his nature his glory more and more through his word remember that this was the biggest fault of nation of Israel they were lusting the, the kings and the Levites were, were supposed to have a copy of the law with themselves but they didn't even the even the priests were supposed to teach the nation of Israel the law of the Moses but they they even they, they them, themselves they, they didn't follow the rules the, f the law of the God we see that the time of Jos Josiah they found the book of the law after many years in the temple and that's kind of funny they were supposed to bring other nation to God 
to introduce God's glory to other nations. But they did even worse than other nations. They forsaken God. They worship other gods. Even in the time of Manasseh, the wicked king of Israel, God says, even I, I, I can't imagine how far you get me far from me, how you, you didn't worse than other nations. So let us to encourage one another to let us to, sh to always be considered to knowing more about our father through his word. His word is powerful to give us vision, give us light and understanding. Please turn to with me to Psalms 119. Verse 130. The unfolding of your word gives light. It imparts understa understanding to the simple. This is the only way that we can getting understanding more about what we should do and what we should not do. When Paul was In the, please turn with me to Book of Acts. I will be. I will finish my message with verse thirty-two in Book of. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Acts twenty verse ten. Uh, verse thirty-two. Acts chapter 20, verse 32 says, And now I command, I command, uh, I commend you to God and to the word, word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are san uh, sanctified. God bless you.